Welcome to Toffee TV. It is the player ratings for West Ham United. Nil, nil, nil. Everton won. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Who was your man of the match today? Um, and I'll read them out as we go along, as long as they don't fly through the comments. Um, loads. I mean, listen, the best thing about it is, is when you get loads, when you get loads in the comments, uh, Loads of man of the matches. That's the best thing. Um, I mean, again, people having a go at Tom Davis. You, I mean, you're just watching different games of football. Clearly, you're watching different games of football. If you're saying Tom Davis didn't have a a decent game today because he he did have a decent game. You're just looking for things that aren't there. If you don't think Tom Davis had a good good consistent game today. Uh, hopefully that's my audio work and I've got, got someone just basically telling me what's going on. Let's get into it. Um, Jordan Pickford. I'm going to give Jordan Pickford a 7.5 uh, today. I think he didn't have much to do. But he um, just did enough. You know, he, he didn't have a save to make. He come out, he was confident, his kicking was good. Um, but he didn't have a save to make, so um, I can't go too high with him because he didn't. I mean, they didn't have a shot on target. Apparently, um, I'm. To, I've be, I, they did, but then it was taken away. They did have a couple of big chances that they didn't take. Um, certainly, the one in the first half they put over. Um, and then the one in the second half with the hit the post, obviously we got a little bit lucky with. But it's it, you know he didn't have to do so. I've seven and a half. He just looks a lot more confident at the moment. He looks a lot more confident, and he looks like he's going about his business with a lot more confidence. And really, since um, since the around the time of the Mayside derby, he's looked. He's looked on it. He's looked a competent goalkeeper, and that's all we've ever wanted for him: cut out the mistakes and just be competent. Just you know, I don't, I don't think we ever. I mean, of course, we all want we want him to be an amazing goalkeeper, and he has made top saves. It was just about cutting out the mistakes, and he's done that. And I think if you, as long as he's getting like sevens every week, then he should be absolutely fine. So Jordan Pickford, um, yeah, seven and a half. I think I said uh, in the defense, Ben Godfrey, an eight today, excellent. Set the assist, an assist, actually. Yeah, I'll go with that Um Set the goal up. And defensively, just looks like a rock. Just looks like a rock, really. Pace-wise, gets himself out of any trouble that's been made for us. He's just... So, he just I've never really seen anyone beat him for pace and... and give him like a really tough time. I think last week he was having to come across and cover for for um Mason Holgate and it just it just pulled him out against Villa but today playing on that side I think it really suits him playing you know he can he can play both sides but obviously the manager likes playing him on that side because he covers well at, 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 on the right and probably allows Seamus Coleman to just concentrate on playing a little bit higher up. So he was great today. Uh, Yeri Mina, I've give a um, seven and seven and a half. Um, head is like a magnet, isn't it? It's like a magnet. It just wins everything in the air. And I suppose I probably have only you know he that he got the injury and that's the only disappointing. I know that's not on on him. It's always frustrating when a player gets an injury. Um, I think he's played something like 24 games this season, which I'd probably want him playing more. But it's, I don't know. It seemed like the same kind of injury that he that got him for the uh, Wolves game, you know, stretching. And he top of the, it looked like around the fire. He looked like something similar to the, to the last one anyway. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, disappointing to see him go off. I really like Mina, definitely our strongest defender. Um, 
definitely just just he's always he all, he's always in the right place at the right time it seems and I know some people don't like him because either the injuries or because um they feel like he's a little bit sort of gangly or uncouth on the ball but I really like him I just think he's our I just think he's our best best defender easily um and it's always yeah you just worry about the next game now without him um but yeah, it was good till he went off today. Uh, Michael Keane, seven and a and a half, solid. Didn't I suppose? It, I always worry about him playing in the three, but I think we were so compact in front of him today that he just he it was almost like he was playing in a three, but also playing in a you know in a normal defensive unit because those plays in front of him work so hard to shut down the passing lanes and so a lot of the time he was just dealing with the high balls and, and just getting in the way of stuff um, and I think that really helped I think that really helped him um, so he was no problem today he didn't do anything amazing he just did his job and and a lot of the time in these away performances that's all we've needed to do is defenders just to do the job what we've seen in the last few weeks is defenders make mistakes Villa game Holgate Spurs game you know, Keane and Holgate. You know, Keane mainly, but Holgate obviously has to take a share of the responsibility. And when we just cut out the mistakes, whether it be the goalkeeper or the defenders, we are, we are just, we are just a lot. We're just, you know, we are obviously a lot better side. And you know, Mina did the job against Antonio today and allowed Keane to just be, to just do the job for others. And we got the low block in, and we got the goal and. Yeah, when players are not making mistakes, we're obviously a much better side. It's it's basic common sense, isn't it? But players don't always do that. Uh, Seamus Coleman. Um, Seamus, Seamus was everywhere today. I'll give him that. He was everywhere. And he... Early on, his positioning was a little bit... Or seen in the first half, his positioning was a, was a little bit... little bit up and down, he was finding himself all over the pitch, now I don't know what his instructions were, of course, I don't know where the manager had asked him to play, into or do a man-marking man, man role, but we did get caught on that right-hand side a, a couple of times, and certainly in the first half there, best chance was where Seamus was inside, and not covering the back post, and you know one of their players had a great opportunity to score, and didn't. But second half seemed to settle down a lot. Had had a great chance to make it two 0 If he did, Dom found him brilliantly, and if he just, if he just sort of hits that first time, then I think he's got a much better chance. I'm not saying he would have scored, but he's got a much better chance than taking a touch. Once he took a touch and it went away from him, then it was always going to be harder for him. So I thought, um, I thought he had a good game. So I'll give him, I'll give him an eight for today. Um, Carlo Ancelotti said he was the man of the match. Um, I don't know how to go that far but he certainly put a shift in today and again that's why I like him higher up the pitch that's why I like him doing that job being just a little bit higher and um, being able to attack a little bit more I and mean, obviously with the pace of Ben Goffrey behind him Ben Goffrey can fill that gap brilliantly so I've given him an 8 uh, Luca Dean on the other side 7.5 um, a little bit more straightforward for him just up and down the wing, perfect. Again, you know, in terms of defending. Um, I tell you what, though, he put a great ball in the second half. That if it Dom, Dom had been hit on the halfway line, he'd been caught and he stayed down. And then he got up and the ball got played over to him. And he just hit it first time. And if Dom is on it, and I don't know if Dom was on it because he picked up this knock. But if Dom just reads that ball coming in, Dom's getting a tap in. Dom's getting that first. So it might have just been that Dom is, is, um, is being caught a little bit off guard because of the injury picked up on the halfway line. But if he just reads that, it's a great cross. It's a great cross. And that's what you get. Dean all, you know, he gets up and down that left-hand side so well. So well. He's so consistent. I've seen people saying, you know, he hasn't done anything for ages, but he just patrols that whole left-hand side on his own. And he's such a clever player. and He makes space for himself so well. So so well the way he makes space. That little yard to put a cross in, and whether that goes straight into the box or whether it's a corner, um, he's always he can patrol. He's such a good player, really is. And we had someone on the other side 
you know, equally as competent as in can play all season. As in, I, I love Seamus Coleman to bits, but he ain't getting any younger. We had someone on the other side who had that bit of prowess as well, could play 30 odd games a season. Now, I know Dean missed part of the season with the, with a bad knock. Um, but it would make such a difference because when we're playing on the left and playing on the right, we are such a better team because we, we, we've we got options. Because I thought in the first half we were, we were moving the ball too slowly. And once you've got an out ball like Dean or someone on the other side, Seamus or whatever, then it gives you gives you ability to get forward, start opening them up. So um, yeah, he was solid today. Um, Tom Davis, seven, solid old game. Loves a tackle, loves a slide. Got caught out a couple of times with I thought poor refereeing decisions. There was a couple of bits there. There was no way they were fouls. It's I, Tom's a player from a, a bygone era. He loves to go in. And there's a couple today, he doesn't touch the player. He just wins the ball. But I think he's just, for me, he goes in, he does a job. He's, he's There's a lot less mistakes in his game now. He, keep it, he keeps it simple. He wants to win the ball. And I think it's what we've been missing in the last few games. It's definitely what we've been missing in the last few games. Is, is someone in there alongside Alan? To take up the slack. Alan likes to go hunting. We know that. He likes to go hunting for the ball. So you still need someone on the back four. This is where last week I think a prop where one of the problems came for. Tom Davis is in front of the back four and it's not Andre Gomez. Holgate gives that ball to Tom and then gets it back. I think he feel I think Tom's a lot more comfortable on the ball there than than someone like Gomez. He makes nice little angles to move the ball, but he'll just give it back. Keeps it nice and simple. And sim- the manager, I love the way when the manager talks about him, he's like, "Yeah, he's a good player. Like right? technically, he's not that good, but you know." He's he even said the other day, the manager when he did, um, the manager said the other day when he was doing a Q and A for the uh, Hope, I think it was Hope University, or one of the universities, sorry. And he just basically said, "Yeah," he said, "Yeah," he was asked who 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 does who does who remind you the most in this set who's out there, and he said Tom. He went technically Tom's not as good as me. But he reminds me of the kind of no nonsense player I was, and I thought that was brilliant because he loves just going. Tom's boss. He's not technically very good, but he's boss. And he and Tom, Tom's solid, and that's what sometimes you just need in a team when you want these performances. And I don't. All right, the manager might be looking for more when we play on games. I understand that, but when Tom keeps keeps it simple, he's no trouble. And this is yeah. And whether people are trying to wind me up or not in the comments, it doesn't really matter. I will always defend Tom Davis. I'm not asked. That man is like a son to me. Um, so he gets, a, he gets a seven, and that's good. That's good. Um, Alan, eight and a half. Brilliant today. Just broke everything up. Nice and tidy. He sees things. Experience. Can see things developing before they happen. This is what this is what experience brings you. It's not always what young players have. Young players follow the ball round. And wait for something to happen. Experienced players see it happening because they've seen enough games of football to understand where the ball's going to be, and that's what he done really, really well today. He got there before the danger did. He get in there and just knock it away. Okay, there was a couple of times where he was sliding in for things and maybe hitting the deck a bit too early. You know, I like I like place to stay on the feet, but but you know he knows where to be. Um, he knows where to be, and that's the most important thing. That's the most important thing. So I thought, you know, I, look, I can't wait to see him alongside the core, eh? um, and maybe with Tom in there as well. But obviously, if you get the three of them in there, you need the right winger. So someone's just give Liam's just give him ten. I wouldn't give him a ten. I think to be a ten, you have to either get an assist or a goal or do something absolutely amazing. He just he just did what he needed to do today, but I think he did it better than everyone else. He's just he's a very busy midfielder that has got that experience that um, other players maybe maybe haven't got. Um, but there you go. There you go. Uh, who's next on the list? Gilfie Sigurdsson, um six. 
I always say this about, you know, what's he doing? What's his job in the team? Well, his job in the team was to create things. Did he create anything? No. Had one decent free kick. Keeper made a good save from it. Um, but is he doing enough to influence the game? No, not really. I don't think he had a terrible game. I think he worked hard. I think he was trying to do stuff. He just didn't do stuff. Because a lot of the time, the game passed him by. He hasn't got the legs to get around the pitch. And the game passed him by. I'm not having a go at him. I'm not being critical of him of, of him as such. Um, but... He's not... the. He doesn't make things happen the way... The way... Um, Hamas Rodriguez does. So, because he's not... He's not as good a player. So... He doesn't want to get involved in the game as much as Hamas Rodriguez does as well, I think. He doesn't go looking for the ball like Hamas Rodriguez does. But then that's discipline, isn't it? The manager asks you to stick in a position. You stick in your position and you do... And I think that's what you've got to say with Sigurdsson. It's just one of those things. He, he These games are not great for him. Positionally, he's disciplined. But these kind of games aren't good for him. He is that player to be on the pitch, just in case you need that extra thing. Also, his set pieces are good. Um, so, there you go. Up front, Richarlison. I would give... I think Richarlison started poorly. But, in his defence, what we didn't have was many people joining in. We had Dom... We had him, and then there was a there was a massive gap waiting for the full-backs to get up the pitch, or the wing-backs, sorry. But as the game went on, he grew massively, I thought. I thought he grew massively into the into the game. Um, and he started running into the channels and running into the areas where the opposition didn't like it. I mean, I don't think West Ham's back four is the fastest in the world um, and I think he started to exploit the spaces in between in behind and he started holding it up really well but then it comes down to his decision making and I thought his decision making was the only thing that let him down today I think he worked really really hard but I do think his decision making let him down is some of his um choices at times where, where there's one in the first half where he had Dom run past him and he slowed it down turned and by the time he turned about three or four West Ham players had got back and he did it in the second half as I said on my match reaction the relationship between him, him and Dom is not good enough it has to massively um, improve for them two to be a partnership because I just don't think it's quite there yet well it's not anywhere there is it but he worked his socks off and he looked obviously gutter when he came off and that's fine I've no problem with that. I've no problem with people who want to be on the pitch being a little bit um, annoyed or upset that they're not. Um, so I'd give him, I'd give him a seven and a half for today's performance. But he looked hungry. He looked up for it. Just didn't always come off. Um, I think that him and Dominic Carvalho have to work harder on finding each other because Richarlison has the ball at times and Dom makes clever runs and it's like oh you know what you've made a good run and it takes a player away from me so I'll run into the space and I think Dom does the same thing I think they both use and they both use runs as like decoy runs which is great but now and again you've got to pass it pass as well you've got to pass on if you see if you see Dom running into space put it in the space in front of him that's all that um that's all that Ben Godfrey did Ben Godfrey put put a seen Dom put it into space, put enough of not on the ball that Dom could catch it, and the and the defender couldn't. And that's all I think Richarlison had to do. But I think Dom was as guilty at times as well of not doing that, or has been um, guilty of not doing that this season. So. There's something definitely to work on there, definitely. Uh, Dominic Avaloon, I would give an eight. Took his goal superbly well. Held the ball up well. Um, always a threat. 21st goal of the season. 16th in the Premier League. 
needs. I mean, if you had penalties, if you got score penalties, he'd easily be in. Tw- easily have twenty, wouldn't he, for the Premier League if you score penalties? Um, if he could get to twenty in the Premier League, that would be huge. That would be absolutely huge. Um, it would, obviously. I think if he could get four more goals this season, it would make Everton a not shoe on for for the European positions, but it certainly certainly help us, certainly help us in those European positions. I'd love to see him get to twenty Premier League goals anyway. I think that would be a that would be a um, a real statement if he could do that. Um, And I think what we have to do, I say we, I think what fans have to do is some fans, is just get off the lads back. He scored 21 goals this season and people still criticise him for what he doesn't do. And this was like, this is like the, this is what happened with Lukaku. Some centre forwards can't do everything. They just can't. They, but they're good at some, what they do. And Dom today, actually the goal Dom scored today was what he'd been criticised for. Has been getting criticised. And rightly so, because he's missed a few of these kind of goal, these chances. But he put it away today and he put it away brilliantly. The run was brilliant, the ball was brilliant, his first touch was brilliant. Just got it out of his feet and then he put it in the other corner. And... That that's that's what we want to see. That's the improvement we want to see. Take your time. Know what you want to do. Maybe actually, maybe you had an, just enough time today to, um, to to know what he wants to do. He just I think what good strikers do is they slow the game down. They slow it down in their mind, and they know what they want to do because they've done it enough times. It's muscle memory, like everything else is in in sport. You do stop something enough times, your body already knows knows what it's doing. Um, at the end of the day, Dom, I love it when people have a goal. Someone said before he cost us goals. He doesn't cost us does get uh, points. He doesn't cost us points at all. Wins us points. In fact, I think he's won us more points than he's play in the Premier League for any club. I think Dominic Carver Lewin. He is the most improved player. In the last 18 months in the Premier League, bar none, as far as I'm concerned. And we have to we have to be happy with that. And what makes you laugh is, again, like always, we've got a player there that people are people are talking about from other clubs. Bigger, you know, clubs that are above us are signing. And for me, we've just got to we've just got to love them. We've got to absolutely love him because we should be loving him. He's been with us since he was, what, 17, 18. Bought him for a million quid. And we should just love him. Simple as that. Everton number nine, doing the job for us. The lad, the lad, Kalad will only get better as far as I'm concerned. He'll get more consistent. And he scored 21 goals this season. Tw- you know, 16 goals in the Premier League. The only person who's done that, the only person who scored 16 goals in the last 20 odd years, 25 years, is Lukaku and Andre Kincelskis, I think, in the Premier League. I think, I think Tony Cotty was the last pers- last English striker to score 16 for us in the Premier League. That's how far back you've got to go. Um and he's he's improving all the time. His attitude's brilliant. I heard him talking after the game, and he he's spot on saying, you know, I was man of the match. He's a little bit bullish. Um, yeah, it's yeah. Everton should be. I know he's he's got a contract, but you know, we 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 all should be we all should be appreciating him as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the subs, I think Mason Olga Mason Olga was the only player on, wasn't he? He was on for. Um, who was on for long enough? So I've give Mason came on. He was solid, done his job. So give him a six and a half, done his job in the time he was on. 
Uh, the other two subs were all right, but they weren't on long enough. I mean, I might, I, I probably would have give, um, Josh King is something if he'd scored. I mean, he should have scored. You know, his first touch, should have, or second touch, he should have scored the header, make it 2-0 and make it a bit more comfortable, a lot more comfortable for us. But he didn't. Um, <laughs> he doesn't hold the ball up very well, I know that. He gives me kittens every time he gets the ball. He just seems to give it away. But it was his opportunity to open his Everton account and he didn't take it. Delf, Delf was all right, but he wasn't wasn't on that long, was he? So don't think I can give him a legitimate score. But um, there you go. Not many people. There's loads of people in the comments, but not many are telling me who their man of the match was. If I'm honest, they're all just saying things, but without giving me the man of the matches. So if you want to give me the man of the match right now in the comments as we're live, then please do, and I will read them out um, to finish this video off because you're all just talking about other things. It's the FA Cup final next week, isn't it? It's weird. That's weird, that, isn't it? Next Saturday. FA Cup final. So, obviously, Thursday now we play Aston Villa. They will be without Ollie Watkins. I don't know whether Grealish will be back, but we've got to take that opportunity. It's as simple as that. We've got to give that opportunity. Last of Crimpion says Coleman. James Fairlong says Allen. Stuart Shuck says Keen. Eric says Allen. Steve says Allen. Scott says Godfrey, Chris says Luke, Luca Dean, Liam says Carlo, Ian says Alan. See, that's fantastic. There's a big mix. Angela says Alan. Sol Harris says man of the match, Alan, would have been meaner if he hadn't gone off. Barry says man of the match was Coleman. See, this is this is this is what we want. Five, five or six man of the matches. That's when you know you've done all right. Uh, Robbie says Alan was man of the match for him. Uh, and Joseph says Davis was man of the matches, right? And I will defend Davis's clothes as well. Someone mentioned that earlier. I will defend his clothes all day. Kieran says Dominic Carvaloon, man of the match because he was clinical. Um, there you go. Right. Thank you very much for watching. If you didn't watch my instant match reaction, go and watch that now. Will Bates says Godfrey. Um, go and watch that now. Make sure to check out Baz's instant match reaction and his three things from today he is making videos he didn't make them last week because he was in a caravan and he couldn't get any wi-fi to watch the match so he didn't um bob holness says prechy fair enough bob i'll have a pee please bob and i'll get prechy there you go make sure to check out them if you want to watch the final word live tomorrow please do it will be on patreon join us on patreon links in the description uh, and it'll be on the screen if you're not watching this video live yeah, we do daily live videos on there on Patreon. It's boss. It's well worth it. Um, all kinds going on there every single day, including daily live videos. Give this video a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you want more great videos, as I said, join us on Patreon. See you later.